when you have a kid that's taking high uh, doses, you're faced with the possibility that uh, why is he or she taking these drugs? And the uh, higher the doses they are taking, the younger they are initiation, this is something that you, a physician should think about or actually the parents should think about. Because it's possible that that kid is uh, trying to compensate for a deficit. And they, so they, in a way they're trying to automedicate themselves and they take drugs and they may be temporarily feeling better. What could that be? It could be anything like a learning disorder that kid cannot pay attention and thus they may start to smoke uh, in order to be able to do their homework. And, and indeed, when they are smoking, they do their homework better if they have ADHD. Or they may have depression and they may also start to smoke or take cocaine because they don't feel right and they, they don't know why they don't feel right, so they start to experiment in themselves. Or they may have the incipient stages of schizophrenia, which will not manifest fully until they are in their teens. But they, they, it, it appears with certain perceptual impairment and, and again, that, that inability to, to feel comfortable may lead them to want to take drugs. And, and therefore, the importance of actually making a very careful evaluation of those kids to rule out whether their use of drugs does not represent an underlying psychiatric disease or disorder. If the person is already addicted, it's going to be much harder to stop taking the drug because it, uh, at that level on the process of addiction, which is the disease itself, you already have the neuroplastic changes, the changes in the brain that lead you to almost like a reflex, take the drug when you're exposed to the drug itself or stimuli. So your control at that point is, if you recognize that you have a problem, is to actually avoid being in situations where you know this will happen. When they are in the road of becoming addicted, most people self-deceive themselves. It's very difficult for an individual that's drinking a lot to really recognize this is becoming a problem. Most people actually undermine. We all don't want to accept that we have a problem, and, and that's not unique for drug addiction. It's more accentuated on drug addiction, but it's also in many of the medical diseases. And so so you, you sort of start to make your own explanations about why. At the beginning, uh, when you're not addicted, there are many, I mean, you associate uh, the drinking or the taking drugs with pleasure and with fun, and our brain is hardwired to want to have fun. So you don't want to relinquish that, and he says, well, if it's not harming me, what's What's wrong with it? That's the, uh, the attitude that most people take. And so you will use all of your mechanisms to deceive yourself into believing that there is not a problem until the problem is so bad that you can no longer ignore, ignore it. And this is, has led many people to say, well, the person has to uh, reach bottom. Well, you don't want them to reach bottom because reaching bottom many times being really bottom, I mean, overdosing or dying. You want them to really uh, take action before it's so bad that there's no way they can ignore it anymore. Start speaking to, uh, to your, your children when they are children. Start to educate them about it. Make it an open conversation and do it with objective evidence, not just don't take drugs because I say so, but provide them with objective information why it is not a good idea to take any drugs. Do not become too overcomplacent and feel that this cannot happen to your child. Be always um, aware that this, uh, that this is an age of risk and that any kid can be vulnerable. So they need, they need to open the dialogue. It's a very confusing, a very intensely emotional issue for a parent to um, recognize that their child may have a problem of drug abuse. Because of course parents have the expectations that their children are above these behaviors and they need to know that drug experimentation, there's a tremendous amount of pressure from peers for drug experimentation. And um, the more a kid feels that their friends are taking drugs, the greater the risk they are there of taking them. Or the same thing in a school, if they feel that their peers are taking drugs, they are much greater risk of taking drug, drugs themselves. So they need to know that, that uh, in the school system there are, there are these dynamics, some of which they actually per se cannot control. But what they can control is their relationship with their children and their involvement and provide them with behaviors that actually 
will allow them to um, engage in things that make them excited. I think that an adolescent that is bored is an adolescent that is at risk of experimenting with drugs. So give them uh, areas where they can explore uh, through, through art, it can be, or through physical activity. Engage them in, in things that will give them pleasure. The other thing that we are also, uh, from, from investigation, factors that make a kid more, more vulnerable. Of course, if there is an underlying psychiatric disease that has not been diagnosed, if the kid is not doing well at school, is inattentive, is actually has crying spells, that, that may, may be hiding a psychiatric disorder. That can put that kid at risk for taking drugs. Uh, evaluate them, don't ignore. Uh, the, the other element is to, that uh, shows is kids with poor social skills may be at greater risk for taking drugs because when they are intoxicated with them, they may feel more at ease. And it's so incredibly important for an adolescent to be like, to be part of a group, that they will, they will in many instances just take the drug and drink in order to feel comfortable with the others. So, so if a kid doesn't have good social skills, there are ways of doing interventions to remediate them. And many of the behavioral interventions have targeted, for example, to teach kids how to say no. But there are also behavioral interventions to, to, to teach kids social skills so that they feel more comfortable when they're interacting with others. This is sort of, the, again, the, the parents who can actually recognize in their children where there may be difficulties on making friends, where their kids may be isolated.